Of course, we will start with this year's rising star, Stefan Jol. And many of us heard his song that is called Silent, and I think in this video. The first thing that we should be looking at is the notes. So we are variating between the different octaves to create a simulation of screaming of a human. So here, if you take a look, it's like you are raising your voice kind of. And if you haven't seen it, I actually discussed this topic in my another video, how this patterns in Melodic Techno. So you can take a look at this. The first thing that we should be doing is going template mini mono. First, we're going to tune this down to 16. All those layers, let's turn all them on all the way up. And let's bring the cutoff and it will sound like this at the moment. To make the sound a bit more phasey and banding on top of each other, I'm going to turn on the FM here. So increasing this one will mean that the first oscillator here will FM modulate the second and third. Uh, so I'm going to go somewhere around here. So I'm going to heavily modulate that and I'm going to turn this thing on. What this does is basically sings all those layers so that we are keeping the same pitch. If I play one more time. The fun begins when you really start playing with the detune, so the length of the shape is different now for those layers, so it will affect the sound together. I'm going to go up, and then I'm going to go bring this down, it's like uh, sound, go down, down. Other important thing here is the feedback. The feedback feeds the sound itself, so the sound gets kind of feather. So if I play around this. So we're going to use a good amount because we want this real aggressive gritty sound. I don't want super aggressive envelope because this is a kind of a still aggressive but lazy sound. It goes like slowly up and down. And digital envelopes here is a bit less in appear than the Moog envelope. So this is why we are going to use it. I'm going to bring this down all the way and put a sustain around here and uh, release around here. It means that we have sustained volume envelope. The volume is consistent and a slight release on top. And let's bring a little bit velocity and keyboard. So, so the, when we play higher notes, uh, it will be affected also the sound. And the same thing in the second envelope. This is a bit more important simply because we're going to use this now on the cutoff. So we play the higher pitches, the cutoff opens more. And then let's put that envelope a little bit onto here. Now we should be a bit too aggressive. Volume this down. Yes. Open this as well so that we sustain the uh, filter. It's just like that. And maybe give a bit attack. Yes. You can see that we are getting there, isn't it? And uh, the things that we should do, put a bit keyboard here, and then I will also put a bit FM to the cutoff, so the that first field oscillator even playing the cutoff filter, so the cutoff moves with oscillator speed. The effect oftentimes gets a bit more inconsistent sound, which is kind of good in this case. Just like that. And I'm gonna open this up so that filter is less aggressive, so we are letting more high sounds go through. Ooh, really cool sound. And the main trick in this sound is here we have these envelopes. I'm going to turn it from the first and the third. When you activate this one, it starts to use the envelope to modulate the tune of the oscillators. So if I aggregate this, you will hear a bit better. <laughs> of course, you don't want to have this, this much. So what I'm going to do, take an LFO and in Diva you can click this button over here and then configure the depth. So configure tune depth. What this does is that now we can map this one to external LFO and this will start moving this up and down. You can see how much it moves. Of course we don't need this amount. We really need this tiny modulation here. So what I'm going to do is decrease the depth all the way. A bit more. Yeah, you, you already get most of the things that you need for this sound. The, the rest is just putting a reverb and a bit chorus and a little bit phase modulation. The phase modulation part is a bit important to be honest, or the wave shaping, uh, I would say. But we are going to do put a saturator to start with. And here the idea is put taking the wave shaper and then banding the wave so it almost feels a bit more gritty. It's like a, almost a bit, a little bit slightly more digital as well in that sense. So wave shaper. And the curve, this one will show you how much you're going to play. So if I play with it, you will hear a bit more. It makes it like sound more or less. So something like this, a bit less dry wet together with the sound. Mm -hmm. 
What is needed now is a slight chorus, ever slight. I'm gonna go for the dramatic, bring the bed down. Really, not that much. And then the main trick happens when we go for the plate reverb, this huge plate. Uh, I'm gonna increase the size, increase the decay, and the fusion down a bit darker. Yeah. Let's bring this a bit down. And then of course during the track the, it played a lot with the envelopes and the cutoff if we increase for example this. Like that. Maybe a bit more feedback. And then of course I think there's a glide in the sound a bit. Let's add this. Let's try it with that. Yeah. <laughs> a really really cool sound. I enjoyed making this sound to be honest. Take a look. It's a cool track. second one on the list is of course our prophet in melodic techno and he had a new track this year from afterlife again and it had this kind of pet sound that everybody was really loving we start with the notes as usual because it's important again you will see that to create this huge feeling a huge pet sound you have to spread your notes so if you take a look at here we have a3 and then we go all the way down to f1 so almost three octaves range so the making the sound really huge yes that being said we're gonna go for the again presets templates this time we're gonna go mini poly again mooc emulation with the poly sound and if i straight ahead bring this down a little bit so that and play it sounds like this <laughs> of course it's nowhere near the original one but you get the idea what we will do is activate all those slaters i want to first those slaters to be a bit more dominant so i'm gonna get a soul tooth there to get that sound and the second one will be in the same range but a bit less on the volume and here i can also keep it the soul tooth uh, as usual the third one is the most important one this one will be actually upper harmonic so one octave above and if we play one more time Now you can hear this high pitch sound in the in between. Additionally, we will add a little bit of noise as well because it's like sound in the pad. <laughs> cool, cool. Again, we are gonna switch from the this snappy envelopes to more smoother analog envelopes. So it will be like a, more in line with the pad sounds like a roll and synths, right? And we're gonna use a bit attack here, a bit decay, and then bring the sustain all the way down. So it will be like more like a long pad sound and of course we're going to give a release so that it sustains itself and the second thing here i'm going to put a bit um, same envelope here and the idea is this one should be used on the cutoff filter so that we open it up i'm going to bring this cutoff down but envelope 2 open this up so this envelope applies to this cutoff now let's lay it on and we're going to switch to the 12 dB so that we're letting those highs a bit I'm going to increase it really slightly and one of the important things in this sound is using chorus and reverb properly the first thing of course we will start with the chorus and I'm going to bring this down a bit an ensemble chorus is more like creating this ensemble type of sound which passes this one quite nicely Ooh. right and once the, you put this big plate the verb on top of that you will see how much the sound changes. so we're going to bring this up and the size we will increase it we want this huge ambience again one more time increase the decay and decrease the damp and this one should be like this <laughs> I 
Isn't this just beautiful? So what I'm going to do, put an EQ first, cut super low stuff. We don't need these guys. And then I'm gonna put a tube, just may make it slightly warm. Actually, you can just take this warm tube uh, preset, it will be fine. Slightly. And then finally, we're gonna add a glue compressor. Easy. If, if you are enjoying the video until now and if you feel like it is adding something to you please don't forget to like the video now and subscribe to the channel because it helps a lot to me and the channel and I will really appreciate it but now the next sound and the next one is actually one of my own I still receive a lot of messages on my Instagram and a lot of comments in YouTube as well asking me to go a bit in detail about this sound and this one is actually from the first four producers one sample episode so it sounds like this The first thing that we should be taking a look at is the notes itself because a lot of people think that I use LFO. Everything here you see is me playing the notes. So what I did basically play a metronome and try to increase the speed while I'm playing the tunes. The most important thing over here, the notes are really not exactly the same time. They are really like shorter and faster and they are not really at all quantized. And there's the reason that feels so shaky, so unstable, which makes the sound itself. I will say, go to presets, templates mini poly of course because we are playing poly notes the first idea is using all the oscillators but in a different oscillator range to create this kind of rich and bright sound put the first oscillator to the center so the eight like this and i'm gonna give a slight lead to say the square so it sounds like this weird right i know the, the second thing that we are going to do taking this oscillator and making it really like a, all the way up it will create this kind of weird thing and I'm gonna put it like around this so it's almost like a tune. The final one is really bright one so we're gonna put it like a really two octaves above and then again I'm gonna go somewhere around here a bit square shapey. And I'm gonna give a bit noise on top. And if I open this. The idea here is using those super short tight envelopes to make the sound like almost like a piano. What I'm going to do, change this one to uh, analog. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to put a bit release so that you almost simulate this uh, piano effect. And I'm going to give a slight attack here, super short decay again. And then I'm going to keep everything like a smooth and tight. I'm going to play with the velocity because you see that I'm changing the velocity quite a bit. Go all the way up and maybe a bit keyboard as well. Something like this. And blip, blip, blip sound. Uh, what we are going to do is bring the cutoff down like this and take the envelope too. So this guy all the way up. <laughs> you can see what I'm going with this one. So in during the track, I automated quite a bit with the cutoff and quite a bit with the envelope. More than cutoff, I did actually envelope. So I increase this one. It gets really this glassy, glassy sound. So I'm gonna increase the, this wire a bit and this one a little bit and slide. And the same thing here, I think we cut it a bit too much. So this requires really this tiny, tiny adjustment simply because it sounds super tiny. So you, every small move that you are making is important here.
Right. Uh, the other thing that I did, actually, I used the reverb outside the uh, diva, but let's keep everything a bit simply here. I'm going to go for the plate here and put a bit and make it probably a bit uh, smaller, a bit brighter. Let's damp. The trick over here though, because this is a very uh, very fast, very going up and down sound, definitely a glue compressor or any type of compressor that at this control the dynamic range is a good idea because we are opening the envelope, we are opening the filter, so the sound gets really huge from really tiny sound to really huge sound. The control it I tend to use a bit like this. And then on top of that, you can definitely use a bit delay to pan the things a little bit around. So let's get that delay. Just like that. You can hear that boom, boom, boom on the sides. You see here the center is down, the sides are up. And if we, again, make it even more aggressive by putting the 12 dB here. Just like that. Really actually quite a simple sound if you think about it, but the way you use it makes huge difference. So. And most importantly, we have a new 4 producers 1 sample community edition, so any of you can join. I'm going to pick 4 winners and those winners will be in the channel, we will do a special community show for them, so it is, will be a lot of fun. And the fourth one is from another super super cool guy, Patrice Böhmel. And actually he was one of the first big artists, I will say, who commented one of my videos. It was like a, almost a year, maybe more than a year ago, I made a, a remake of one of his tracks. And he came and commented and actually explained how he did it. That he's such a cool guy, I will say, and sounds like this. So what we're going to do first, take a look at the notes. So we have a simple chord here. Let's pick the mini poly as well, because it's a poly sound, sounds like this. So the first thing that we're going to do is make this sound really short and plucky, so that we can repeat it in a succession, if that is the correct word. But anyway, so what we're going to do, just utilize our mini poly. In this case, I'm going to go for a bit more smoother wave, like a triangle stuff, put it in the 8 and put the one octave above. This time I'm going to go for maybe square wavy stuff and this one. We can fix that so that the second one is a bit louder and put the cutoff filter on top of that. I'm going to get a really fast snappy this time envelopes and bring this down, bring this down, bring this down. So a little bit decay on both of them. So you get this kind of snappy sound. What I'm going to do basically is put a vocoder. Like I said, I think he used a second method with a sample, but we will do it this way first. And this will make the sound a bit more like a, like this. So it gets a bit like, a, let me put it 100% so that you can hear like a percussion sound. Just like that. It's like a, that percussion on top. I'm gonna bring this down. Without. It just adds this additional layer on top of that. The important thing over here though, the arpeggiator. We're gonna use the chord trigger, so because we would like to trigger this chord. And the main idea is take off from the cinch, and if I play now. And that is like how you just move up and down or make this such a sound. And then of course on top of that I think there was a delay at the end of the part. So it was like a ping pong I think. Then you do like this. In the beginning it is like this. And then once you are, let's say you are ending here, let's play fast version. Okay, open this delay up. So when you turn the arpeggiator down, you still hear the delays around, uh, let's say. If I do one more time. Mm -hmm. 
just like that. Of course, you turn off the arpeggiator, but you still keep that things on. But I think there is a second easier method, and you can also do a bit more in this method, is the using a simpler. Uh, the origin sound actually sounds like this. So I'm using just a percussive synthy hit. Like, I think he did it this way. Hope that he comes and comments what he did. But the easiest method here, here though, the length of the sample here, if you assign to a micro like this, what you can do, like you play. And you can get exactly the same result with any sample, with any sound. So, and of course, the same thing over here, if you put a delay. Of course, you then you turn this off, but you get the idea. The same idea, super simple. But that is the fourth sound, and this brings us the final preset. If you want me to continue with the concept, and if you like this concept, please comment below. Maybe we can take a look at different genres. In all these four different sounds that we have been through, I think this is a more complicated sound when it comes to the sound design itself. But let's take a look at the notes first. The notes are like this. It's just playing around, up and down. There's not really something that different about it. Although, take a look at the length. The length is five bar rather than four bar. So it has this kind of polarity feel in the track. It feels weird. It feels like they always play something new. And the sound itself is very FME, very weird. And to do this, actually, you have to use your ears, I will say. You have to really understand the pitch by listening to it. Otherwise, you will have really, really hard time. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go for the presets again, pick the template, start with Jupe 6, and then we are going to play around a little bit. What I'm going to do, for example, bring this one to the feedback so that we can feed back around. Let me solo this so that you can hear the notes. What we are going to do, the very first thing that I'm going to put is put all the way this down. So it will sound like... It almost sounds like a real instrument. And then I'm going to put this one octave above. And put this one to the scale, uh, soft to Take a look what happens when I do this cross modulation. It gets out of control, the pitch goes really weird. And this is the part why I say that you have to hear it. Like, you have to hear the pitch of this sound. And let's say we are happy with this part. But I'm not happy with the pitch. The thing that you can do, this detune knob here, you can play around until you catch the right pitch. And then once you have it, you stay it there. So in this case, I'm going to move this up. Like around here, it gets really stable, but we don't want that stable not notes because in the original track, it was really like moving very... You can hear this weird pitch modulation, so we are going to do the same thing. I'm going to go around here. And bring the cutoff down so that you don't hear this weird up. I'm going to bring an envelope so that we can make this now more plucky like the original sound. Let's fix all these, the releases and so on. I want this small envelope and put a bit release. And of course, give it velocity and keyboard, both of them. And envelope amount is crucial here. We are getting there, but I'm going to switch from low pass to band pass here. So I want this really specific mid area of the sound. So it almost feels like organic sound. So what I'm going to do, play around a bit. Like that. Can give it the feedback. And then once we have done this, we are going to add a bit delay on top. A little bit of FM too. And on top of that, to make the sound a bit snappier, what you can do is actually get a compressor, any compressor really, bring this down. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a bit saturation. And of course, then in the track, it, they play around a little bit as well, so it starts a bit darker. Let's do that. And 
Again, this cross modulation is very important. Like if the small, tiniest amount affects a lot. So we moved a bit down, and I think this is more or less the sound that they were using. Yeah, and that is the final sound. The presets are free to download. I will put it on the command section. And if you want more of these type of presets, I actually have Diva Pigment Serum preset pack. So you can take a look at that. Yeah, I have a lot of these type of sounds in them. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.